Great question. Uh, Peter Cray in chat asks, weird question, if we had Stockfish for Spire. So like a, a bot that can play Slay the Spire, kind of like Stockfish bot plays chess. What percentage of seeds do I think it could wouldn't beat on A20 heart runs? At least 95% of seeds it would fail at, is my guess. Um, mechanically, Slay the Spire is many, many, many orders of magnitude more complicated than chess is. And so any attempt at creating an algorithm to play Slay the Spire is going to be vastly less successful. Um, there are a couple bots that have been made to play Slay the Spire, but they're very crude, and they definitely can't do High Ascension very well. I think you'd have a really hard time, even with a supercomputer, creating an AI that would be able to play Spire even vaguely well. There's just way too many possibilities to consider. What percentage of seeds do I think are winnable for Ironclad? The vast majority of them. The vast majority of them. Yeah, we'd have to wait for quantum computing or some... Some truly incredible leaps in computing technology, otherwise. Best majority being more than 95%. Depends on what you consider winnable, right? Like, is it is it winnable with any series of choices from the very beginning? Then yes, basically every single seed. Um, is it realistically winnable after you've clicked one of these four options and then a starting node? Far fewer percentage already after the first two clicks. And you don't know which of the first two clicks are going to be really important. Although I might lose 7 max health for a transform 2 here. That does look pretty good. Overall, this is an interesting act. Some front-loaded elites, very little elites in the middle of the act. And slime boss at the end waiting for us. We'd have to high roll to be able to do more than one elite this act. I maybe could take three random potions and try to brute force an early elite. But I can't imagine that's right. I guess that would let me do this path, perhaps. Is that five fires on the mid path? Just four. Four is pretty good, though. Four is enough to go Searing Blow, I think. With the late elite, especially. I don't think I would risk it on a colorless card here, although the right colorless card, like um, Swift Strike or Trip, could make a big difference. But if it's Fruit Juice and two Fire Potions, now that's... that's good. What if it's three Fruit Juice? I don't think I'm ever taking Boss Swap in this position. Seems pretty scary. So I'm saying 7 max health for Transform 2 looks pretty good. We lose two Strikes? Yeah, we lose two strikes. Pretty sure. Maybe one strike, one defend. Because otherwise it's uh, three potions into this line. And I don't even think that's reliable enough. I wouldn't, I wouldn't trust it well. Might be doable, but it's going to be really scary. So I say transform two. That's a pretty long-term advantage. Let's do one in one. Corruption Body Slam. Okay. That is interesting. I've had a lot of runs that involve these two cards that won very decisively, uh, but they are not cards for floor one, that's for sure. That is definitely a downgrade to the starting deck. Which is very bad. I'll just take six to the face then. That sounds good to you. And then probably defend, defend, body slam. And then we can kill. That's good. Only down one health from Cultus with this deck? I, it has to be good as far as outcomes. Okay. I like it. Uh, the first card that really draws my eye here, Combust. We lose health each turn to deal damage to all enemies. The reason it is so appealing here is that we're fighting Slime Boss at the end of the act. And having a power that does AoE damage each turn is very good for getting through this fight. 
It's really good in Act 1 in general. And the self-damage isn't as bad as you might think. Often you're only taking two or three from playing the Combust. And there are ways to make it work to our advantage, too. Such as the Tungsten Rod or the Rupture Power. If we already have a Combust, we can take a Blood for Blood much easier as well. Definitely don't go to this shop. Okay, yeah, we're going to not go to the Elite unless we get really strong. We can take a Curse to make our deck even worse to get some money. Then all we have to do is beat an Elite with the Curse to get to the shop. <laughs> don't do that. That's death. That's super death. And I think we just defend Strike Body Slam again. Seems fine. Bring it to six? No, bring it to five, so Combust can kill. And we don't even need to use Combust, so we'll save the one hit point. Although, it's not one hit point, because we're healing. Full health. You know, this is going better than I expected so far. Given that we're down to defend, I like armaments. It's a little bit of block and a card upgrade. Dropkick seems pretty unreliable at the moment. And armaments can make body slam better too. Warcry seems awful. We should take it. How about how about no? Rarely do I want Warcry. I have to have Dead Branch or something similar to want it usually. Or a free upgrade. Dropkick Corruption is tempting. I could see that. I could definitely see that being a, uh, a reason to take it. But I don't trust it. Not one bit. What do I do here? Arma, Body Slam, Strike, kill the little one? Or we can upgrade and bash. Don't think that's a good idea. Bash Arma Body Slam also works just fine. Although, again, I'm killing the little one here, so... Actually, how much damage is that? We would do 7. So 15. Bring it to 19. No, we can't kill. So yeah, kill the little one. Guess I'll upgrade Body Slam. Seems fine. And here we just block. Skip the combust for this fight. Good enough. Get another potion. And there's the Blood for Blood. With this getting discounted by one each turn via Combust, I think Blood for Blood is excellent. It's also a good card to redraw into after you've exhausted all your skills with Corruption, so I quite like it here. And that means we want to play Combust early in most fights to get the Blood for Blood working. A bit better. I can even upgrade the blood for blood to further discount it. Goes to one cost. 22 damage. Blam. No need to use a potion here. We're only down a little bit of health. Infernal Blade, Seeing Red, Metallicize. Interesting. Metallicize is pretty good in the early game, it's just a value power. Infernal Blade I like quite a bit with Corruption, as it becomes zero cost. 
I'm wondering if we actually do want to fight an elite now. Because we have combust for sentries. And we have blood for blood combust for Legavolid and Gremlinob. And two good potions, too. Even if we have to rest between the combats, I'm pretty sure we can win both from this position. That's right, armaments can also make Infernal Blade zero cost. Metallicize would make two elites a little bit safer. But only a little bit. I'd rather have the additional offense for later game. So I think my, my best play is to go two elites here. Got lots of health, we're gonna heal, we're gonna gather relics up quickly. We even have a good chance of getting a potion from the first one we kill. Let's do it. Let's do it. First up, Gremlin Knob with only 85 hit points. And we can play Combust Armaments Infernal Blade turn one. If I upgrade Blood for Blood, it becomes three cost. I could also play Energy Potion Combust Blood for Blood for 22. Otherwise, the answer is to play the Infernal Blade, then decide whether to upgrade Combust or the uh, created card. But if we Blade, then we're not playing Blood for Blood. I think that is the line. Let's see what we get. Clothesline, okay. Upgraded Clothesline for sure here to assure that we're weak on turn three. I don't think we're getting a three-turn kill with this draw order. Although, let's do some quick math here. Assuming the best possible damage draw and a strength potion, can we kill the Grumlin Ob? So that would be... This turn, we're going to... Actually, let's even account for Combust's two damage per turn more. Let's assume I upgrade Combust. So we would do 14 plus 7. Next turn, Bash Strike. The turn after that, Triple Strike. So it'd be 10 plus 12. 22. And then 36. That totals to 93. Okay, so there is a way to get a kill. And in fact, that's a kill even... That that exact line is a kill even without Combust being upgraded. So we should definitely upgrade Close Line. Because we kill... Even... Because we then we, we do kill with the good draw order. And if we don't get the good draw order, we take less damage on turn three. But we still use the Strength Potion, I think. That's my conclusion here. Strength Potion, upgrade Close Line. Play Combust. But oh, we missed the Bash, so we're definitely taking uh, a hit next turn. That's completely fine. That's what Clothesline is for. Let's see, there are enough skills that I, I could actually draw zero damage next turn, so we should probably play a Strike just for safety here. The defend will really not block for much. Just need one attack now. And we get plenty. Okay. Not a perfect Gremlin Ob fight by any stretch of the imagination, but not a bad one. We get some passive block, which will help a lot. And Hemokinesis Charger Flame Barrier, all of which I like quite a bit. Hemo with Blood for Blood is interesting. That could be a lot of front-loaded damage. Long term, I much prefer Flame Barrier. Especially with Corruption, actually. Corruption says take Flame Barrier. And I think that's what I'm going to do. We also know this is not a Gremlin Knob, so taking another skill might be a good idea.
And let's see. There is another rest site before the next elite. With 45 health and thread needle, I think we're okay here. I don't expect to take too much damage to either of the remaining elites. We still have a potion. We should be able to upgrade combust or armaments here. Or blood for blood. Also a very good upgrade. Yeah, we should upgrade blood for blood. Okay, that's what I'll do. And that probably makes this turn the energy potion turn. That way I can play the blood for blood and still block. We can do blood for blood, armaments, strike plus. And almost kill one here. Take one. Lose one plated armor, make the blood for blood cheaper. Or I could play defend instead of the strike, but I think I should play the strike. Because we definitely want to kill the front or back one next turn. This would be 31 damage. So we'd have to do eight more. Hmm. Bash would work. Or two strikes. That's fine. Camel Case S, thanks for the prime sub and the six months of supports. <laughs> Combust, body slam, defend gets there. Good enough. And now our Blood for Blood is free if we see it again. Oh, we do see it again. Um, I can either Headbutt Flame Barrier or Headbutt Blood for Blood. Let's see, if we do 9 plus 10, this will kill. So just Headbutt the Blood for Blood here. Good. Very good. And then we can Headbutt it again. Excellent job, Headbutt. Really good fight. Blood for Blood absolutely slapped there. And for the second time today, we get an early egg relic. This one's the Molten Egg, so all attacks are upgraded, like this Drop Kick or this Sever Soul. Hmm, Sever Soul. Hmm. We saw that Dudgy uh, Kimball yesterday. No refunds. How is this better? Burning Pack can be very good. Um, actually, yeah, Burning Pack with um, Body Slam and Corruption and Blood for Blood is really good. As it allows us to exhaust our garbage attacks and get back to the free Blood for Blood to play over and over and over again. Yes, I really like this Burning Pack with the Corruption. Makes me a little worried about an upcoming Gremlin Knob, but we have a couple more card rewards to prepare for that. We can also just avoid the last Elite if we really want to. I don't see why I would. Bag of prep. Nope. Bottled Combust. Hmm. Could take the blue key instead of this, although Bottled Combust with the Blood for Blood is kind of a thing. Makes any AoE fight way less threatening, which I like quite a lot. Even later in the game, uh, Reptomancer is less threatening. Or we could bottle Corruption. Right, we could also do that. That's kind of spicy. That's kind of spicy. Knowing our luck, if we bottle the corruption, we'll find a dead branch later, too. When do I advise avoiding an elite you originally intended to fight? When you low roll in your rewards, you don't find the solutions you needed for that elite fight. When your first elite is your worst matchup and it hurts you a lot, and then the third elite can be that matchup again. You don't want to face the third elite. It's also a good time to avoid the uh, the final elite of an act. 
That's where we're at right now, is that this could be another Gremlin knob, and it could go way worse than the first time. Because we've added a lot of non-attack power, uh, non-attack skill cards to our deck. The Flame Barrier, the Burning Pact. Battle Corruption is so good later, is the thing. It's even pretty good in the Slime Boss fight. Okay, I'll Bottle Corruption. So many fights I like that for. Like this one. Give me your gold. You'd better play this to avoid getting robbed here. Blood Potion, that's good. Pommel Strike Plus, love it. Bloodletting, decent. But more card draw is excellent. Again, we're, we're getting zero cost cards because of the corruption, because of the blood for blood. Body Slam upgraded is also free. So Pommel Strike becomes excellent. Luke Dorf, thanks for the 15 months. Am I a fan of Orion's belt? Just a waste of space. Bad joke, three stars. Love it. <laughs> that was terrible. Truly terrible. So we just play Corruption here, right? Pretty sure. With three strikes being the other option. Doesn't seem particularly worth it. Hmm... So we upgrade the combust. That sounds reasonable. Upgrade the combust, play the combust, play the blood for blood here. We gotta kill the cultist quickly. Play the sever soul here as well. Yeah, now the cultist is dead without further action required. We can full block the slime. This is great. Corruption is OP. Evolve. When you draw a status card, draw more cards. In a deck that is exhausting all of its own cards, this can be quite helpful, because if we end up in a fight against enemy statuses, then we don't have to just draw statuses. That's kind of cool. Iron Wave Plus is also just fine here. Bunch of block, bunch of damage. Reusable, unlike our other blocks. This makes power through a lot better, is the thing. I'm a little worried we might have too many powers. Iron Wave is notably a lot better for Grumlin Knob. And we already have Combust for Slime Boss. So the Evolve is more for stuff like Chosen. Triple Slavers. And then the late game enemy is Time Eater, Donu Deca, Shield and Spear, Heart. Do you have any more card rewards before that elite? No. Hmm. Could just skip the elite. That's allowed. Although with a uh, Blood Potion, I really don't feel motivated to. We should take another Relic here. Tempting to upgrade our Corruption, given that it's bottled. This deck does not want to sneak away. Luke B. Saw says, I feel like Corruption is good in hallway in some elite fights, but it can be a death sentence against things like the Awakened One in Heart. Yes. Um... There are two ways to solve the problem. One is via deck building. If you can build your deck such that once the corruption's in play, you just kind of win. 
um, then you can counteract that. For example, using the corruption to exhaust all your skills so that you're left with a dropkick infinite can be a, a reliable way to win late game combats. The other option is to pick and choose. Not every fight you want to play corruption, or at least not immediately. Um, and I think it's wise to pair the corruption with targeted exhaust cards such that Yes, in a fight where I want to reuse, say, the Flame Barrier over and over again, like the Awaken One fight, I can use the Burning Pact to delete the Corruption. And then we don't have a Corruption to deal with. So I've definitely had successful runs where you play the Corruption sometimes, but not always. Or you wait to play the Corruption, like until Phase 2 of Awakened One. Definitely a difficult skill to learn is when exactly should you play the Corruption, when you should not... Uh, a part of the calculation can be, if I play all of my block cards exactly one time, do I have enough block to survive the whole fight? And the answer may be no. In which case, you might not want to play it. I'm reasonably certain we can take this Evolve and... Fight the Elite? I'm pretty sure. Oh, we get a bonus elite. You come across a dead adventurer on the floor. His pants have been stolen, and the armor and face appear to be scoured by flames. In the dead adventurer event, you come across a dead adventurer who has been ambushed by one of the elites of the act. The text tells you which one. Scoured by flames, specifically referring to the three centuries fight. And now we have evolved for that fight, so we're good at that fight. Find loot. Couldn't find anything. We're caught off guard. If we can win here, we're going to get the rewards of an elite and then some. I guess we probably upgrade Combust. Don't play the Corruption here. Seven damage per turn to all of these. We'll end this fight really quickly. Best up, chat. Who took his pants? Who did it? I don't think we'll use the Thorn Spot here. If we get a potion drop, we can just drink the Blood Potion. Blood for Blood kills. Defend mostly blocks. And Evolve means we'll be safe for the rest of the fight. Sounds perfect. Thanks, Blood for Blood. Want to draw the dazed. So then I draw more cards. Kind of weird. We're basically guaranteed to draw five non status cards each turn. Like so, apparently. Angry mode, go! Perfect. We want to make sure we do actually kill them with our attacks. That way we save the one health from combust going off at the end of the turn. The other option, by the way, is that we get a potion belt and we get to keep all three potions. Easy. Fear potion makes me a lot less afraid of gremlin knobs, so I think we don't need to take an attack here. Is that his belt? That's my belt. This run is still a long way away from winning. We have an, an immediate power answer, but this could fall apart in Act 2 if we don't find some of the pieces that go with Corruption. Twin Strike is good burst here. Twin Strike is, is pretty good in Act 2. I don't want to rely only on Blood for Blood Body Slam. I really want another Pummel Strike, though, not a Twin Strike. I'm gonna skip this. I think we're okay. I am gonna take the event, or the rest site, rather, and upgrade... Corruption? More of a for later upgrade, but yeah, that is what I want to upgrade here. That way we can play Corruption and another card on turn one. If we want to play Corruption. And it's not even Gremlin Knob, so life's actually super easy. We can play Corruption Combust. Or Corruption Armaments Upgrade Combust. Let's do that. It'll cause us to deal 7 damage per turn and starts ticking down the timer on free blood for blood. 
It also doesn't wake up the Legabulin. Not until we're good and ready. This is a good turn to wake. Yeah, this is a good turn to wake up because we have lots of block in the draw pile. Blood for blood will be nice and cheap. Okay, let's go now. Perfected strike. Do I want a fear potion here? Shouldn't need it for slime boss. Could save me quite a bit of health here. I'm gonna use it. So I want to kill the turn after this. We're gonna use all our blocks here, pretty much. Well, bam. Yeah, I think without the Fear Potion, we have to take this hit, which would be, well, six, but I suspect that was worth it. Self-forming Clay is an amazing relic. What a great payoff for taking the extra combat. Now, whenever we lose health, we also gain three block next turn, and we have a Dark Embrace. Pretty good. And there's our combo put together. Corruption, Dark Embrace, and then we have the payoff, which is draw the blood for blood over and over and over again. Or the body slam over and over and over again. Once we get maybe a feel no pain or a barricade, this becomes really good. And the uh, self-forming clay will help with that too. So we, we, I would say reasonably high rolled act one. We got mostly good relics. Bottled corruption's fun. Couple interesting options here for Slime Boss. I no longer feel like we need to upgrade Combust as the AoE damage is a secondary benefit. Uh, I think we should upgrade the Dark Embrace because that way, we, if we draw Corruption Dark Embrace together on turn one, we can play them both, which is pretty important to me that we can do. One-time cost reduction upgrades. If you're new to this game, it can feel a little weird to upgrade a card that you are only gonna play one time per fight. Uh, just to save one energy, but being able to get more powers down in one turn or just play more cards during that early turn of fight can make such a huge difference on High Ascension. Very strongly recommend grabbing upgrades like this if you are struggling to play all your cards. And look at that, instant reward, as we do in fact get Corruption Dark Embrace turn one together, and now I can play them together. But my face, though. Hmm. I guess I need to play some defends right now, because we need to draw these cards. Clash. Okay, that's a little better next turn. I don't want to lose all my block, though. Doesn't look like we're splitting this turn, so let's let's do some stuff here. Ouch. Ouch. Hopefully we have a blood potion. And hopefully enough health. That we're okay here. Okay, next turn we can do a lot of damage. Get ten slimes in the deck, which I don't love. I 
want to wait on that. So if we split now, we do 33 plus 5, 38. 91 minus 38. It's 53. That's okay. If we get double attacked, though, we're kind of hosed. Whereas if I don't play it, we go to 86 next turn, no bull. And if I bash Pommel Strike, we do 8 plus 15, 23 plus 7, 30 more. So 86 goes to 56. And then we're closer to redrawing the Blood for Blood. I like that more. Please don't kill me, Slime Boss. This is 23. I could also do 25 with Arma, Armal Strike, stuff. Let's find if we can redraw the um, Blood for Blood mainly. That'd be really good. Yes. Okay, so Bash Blood for Blood. That's a split. There we go. Correct. And I'm just going to Flame Barrier into Body Slam here. Cannot allow this slime to weaken us. We're entirely damage dependent. Just kill it. They're both dead to combust. Hit you. We win. Because even if I play nothing on this turn, we're completely fine. These two die. This one splits. But we also have blood for blood. So we win. GG. The powers take care of the slime boss pretty decisively. And we're through with three potions on the belts. There's Barricade. Did you know that I play games other than Slay the Spire? It's true. Catch me over on Baylor Lord Plays for card games, RPGs, strategy games, and more. There is Barricade. Barricade makes it easier to... Play all of the skills in one turn and then keep the block. Also lets us keep the block from self-forming clay. We're building this deck a little bit backwards though. We kind of have our Act 3 cards that we're adding right now. And I'm a little worried about how it's going to apply in Act 2. I guess that's going to depend on our boss relic. Threadneedle's also better with the Barricade. That's true. Yeah, we have a lot of reasons to take Barricade. Seven passive block per turn. I think we do want to take fewer elites in Act 2 here. I was kind of hoping we could get an upgraded Immolate or something from this combat reward. But I think Barricade will do. Hmm. Stone or Hammer? More energy is definitely where this deck wants to be. We can play more attacks. I'll be... Hmm. Hammer lets us upgrade the Body Slam, which is very important. Barricade, too. There is the option of Black Blood. 12 hit points per combat. Actually not terrible. Given that we're doing energy cheat stuff. But I think we do want more base energy here. We do want to upgrade our powers. We want to upgrade the Barricade. We want to upgrade the Evolve. And again, the Body Slam. That makes Philo Stone reasonable. Problem is, additional damage on enemies makes it harder to get extra block to retain. Don't like that part. Yeah, we have to survive during setups currently, so this does make, does make that a lot harder. But so does not having upgrades, right? I'm taking the Philo Stone here. I'm not afraid of birds with the Liquid Bronze. I'm just mostly glad we get a shop. You don't always get a shop in Act 2. Uh, we also get the option to not fight elites. Look at this path. If we're, if we're currently afraid of how the deck's performing, we can do something like this. Remove some garbage. Upgrade a bunch of things. And just kind of skedaddle into Act 3, where this deck's going to perform quite well. 
That said, we're still missing some core pieces. We want more block cards total. Like, any number of additional block cards are welcome at this point. Definitely want to get rid of strikes. The strikes for bites would be tempting. Don't think we're going to do it this time. Disarm would make a big difference, too. Do so much damage. Why do you hurt me so? The downside of Barricade. If only I'd drawn a real card there. Guess I'll play Hemo. I'll get a bunch of block next turn. Ow. Ow, my face. Dark Embrace Corruption in this deck makes Sentinel pretty good. It's going to make Barricade a lot easier to play. Anger somewhat tempting for immediate damage. Take a Sentinel, though. Sentinel is usually a good sign. We can get all our health back with Lee's Waffle. That's also tempting. Not even that expensive here. A Fire Potion is good insurance for a troublesome front-loaded threat as well. If we want uh, to stack Metallicize block, here it is on sale for 90. Well, for sale for 90. Definitely want this waffle. Definitely want this waffle. Another armaments, just because we need more skills. It's not bad. It's pretty cheap, too. I don't dislike it here. Yeah, might as well. Waffle, card remove, armaments. We definitely don't take bites. I could remove bash to allow us to maybe take bites. But then we have no Voln. Seems like a bad deal. Nah, we don't need bites. Not buying fish either. Keep our cash for the next shop we would encounter, wherever it may be. Somebody was saying they feel like the Act 2 easy pool is a bit more threatening than Act 3. I don't know that I agree. You, you compare Chosen 1 to 1 to uh, Orb Walker, for example. I think the Orb Walker is uh, rather more threatening as it attacks you on turn 1 as well. And then always escalates. There's no buff turns. And those burns don't go away, unlike the dazed. Hmm. I'm gonna play Pummel Strike. Let's go evolve Infernal Blade. Alright. Do you see some downsides here? To the current strategy. Behold, I have drawn even more cards. I'm just going to draw more and more and more cards, too. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. 
Here's some front load, and I like Carnage specifically because it exhausts if we choose not to play it. So it's front load for right now, and it just is card draw for a mild inconvenience at worst later on. Let's grab that. Do I still want to take this path, or do I think I should maybe try for an elite, perhaps? Kind of like this option. Then we can maybe opt into this elite. Upgrade Body Slam or Barricade. Do I want to remove Combust now? No, I still want it as a way to gain three block per turn and as a way to make the Blood for Blood free. If we don't want it, we can use Burning Pact on it. Could opt into three. I could go for the Burning Elite. We're not going to do that. I'm not that crazy. But Liquid Bronze Fire Potion makes me feel pretty secure against both Book of Stabbing and Slavers. We could also remove another strike at this uh, shop here. Although that would make going to this shop ridiculous. Wait, don't do this path. Hmm. We should probably be taking fights to get some more card rewards. Does seem important. Let's do this. We can fight the Burning Elite if we feel really good. I don't think we will. I think this is the path I want. A couple more combats here. First up, Avocado plus Fungi Beast. Ouch, my face. Good. Fair enough. Forge pot is allowed. Shouldn't be necessary. We at least get a bunch of block from that. Oh yeah, Philosopher's Stone. Thirty-three. Son of a gun. Well, shit. <laughs> and that's why we don't take elites, I guess. Ow. Lose twenty more. That's going to happen in every fight that we bottom deck Dark Embrace, just for a, your information. Every single fight. With bottom deck Dark Embrace. This is really bad, actually. Tell me I can kill it next turn. Might have to fire push it. Pot is the easiest way to save health there, or Blessing of the Forge works too. Use the Thorns Pot. Entropic Brew. Okay, okay. And somebody was just saying a second Dark Embrace would indeed be nice. Um, I guess we can stop panicking. And we can remove another strike. Okay, we can definitely stop panicking. Um, I guess everything is fine? Everything appears to be fine. If I want to think about taking on that Burning Elite, I would like to... rest here. Otherwise, we can upgrade... 
something. Hmm. Resting is silly with blood potion. I, I mean, with the burning elite, we're going to want the lots of health. Right, it's a burning elite with philosopher's stone, so this could be um, a plus five strength book of stabbing. Maybe I don't go here. That sounds terrifying. That sounds really terrifying. But we might also just kill it on turn one. Kind of hard to tell. Uh, actually, I think it would be plus four. Sorry, not plus five. Uh, 11x multi-attacks. Yeah, it's two, three, four for strength. Yeah, double as long as the double dark embrace aren't both on the bottom, it shouldn't be that bad. Is a burning nemesis that much more appealing? Yes. We have barricade, we have evolve. Nemesis is no problem. I think I'll leave the Burning Elite for next act. Then we can upgrade now. It's too spooky, man. Let's upgrade Barricade. Repto would be spooky, too. Repto could be a problem. We can also just have this kind of problem. Ow. My face. Ow, ow, my face. Easy peasy. why two Dark Embraces is really good here. Just do hot nonsense like that. Take the Blood Pot, take the Flex Pot, take a Shrug Plus. There's some block. And card draw. Welcome. Okay, still not strong enough to do this. We could actually just die on turn one, even with all these potions, so definitely no. How about we transform our remaining two strikes? Getting two other cards. If they're attacks, they're upgraded attacks. And if they're not attacks, that means they're skills, which means they're free, or they're powers, which means they'll combo with the other crap we're doing. So I think any hit is good, really. Two more corruptions, please. Wait a minute. Maybe not any hit. You can also get three strength turn one, but this is really not what the deck is doing. We set up powers and then we win. Double feed plus. Now we get dual wield and a second carnage plus, which is pretty good. I like that. We can dual wield the blood for blood or the body slam, notably. And Aura Calcum is here for a little bit of guaranteed block. I actually rather like that with the thread needle, although it doesn't work with self forming clay. So maybe blue key. This will help sometimes. Figure this will save us six or 12 or 18 health, maybe over the course of the run. Good for turn one. What if old coin again? We get to the next chest. I think we're winning. With this deck.
But what if Dead Branch? Alright, I'll key it. I don't think it's that good. I do think we're going to take this elite. Probably? Although that maybe means resting here. We got all the important upgrades, didn't we? Pretty much. I can rest. To take an elite. I think that's worth it. How many barricades do we add? One or two? <laughs> uh, we can duplicate Dark Embrace, get a third Dark Embrace. If I had an upgraded block skill, if I had Flame Barrier Plus, I might dupe that. Um, any attack we duplicate does get upgraded. I don't think that's that good either. Can have a third Carnage. Blood Potion's an option. Do we ever remove Bash? Probably. Flash of Steel seems pretty good with what we're doing, actually. We can afford Flash of Steel and a Carter move. Flash of Steel lets us do a lot more damage once we're at the end point of the deck. Could even double Flash of Steel actually go infinite with Flash of Steel? Costs uh, 255. Yeah, we can just barely afford double Flash of Steel plus. Now that's cute. Repeatable Chicken, thanks for the three months of the Prime sub. Problem is, Double Flash of Steel doesn't work on the heart. I think one Flash of Steel is fine. It's also not good enough for Time Eater, right? Let's try that. It's Gremlin Leader. You have Corruption Barricade turn one. Surely that's good. Or I can play Carnage instead of presumably the Barricade. Kill one of the Gremlins. Probably a good idea. If we get the thing in play, then we're winning anyway. dare. Now might be a good time for the Forge Pot. I can triple Carnage with the Forge Pots. We do more block with the Flame Barrier. Seems like a good potion. Yeah, seems like a good potion. Still take some. Lots of carnages coming up. Let's go for the kill here. Hmm. That's a kill, though, right? Yeah. Okay. Not too bad. Get through the elite with a minor HP expenditure and one potion gone. As a reward, we get a question card, which should make it easier to find the synergy cards we're looking for. Yoink. Talked about how broken Second Wind is on our last run. I think it's definitely going to help on this run.
turn one OP. Deck works. Yeah, we want more card draw. Still missing a disarm, but uh, we'll get there. Deck works. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> OP. Now that's what we want to see turn one. Good fight. Good fight. Good times. Here, just upgrade uh, dual wield for maximum, for maximum power. very strong. Shockwave is something we're missing in the deck currently. We actually removed Bash, so we have no weak or vuln. Give me that. Cyrus TD with the prime sub in the 39 months. Also, Shockwave is a no downside card with bottled corruption, right? Guess we don't need fire potion. Although it could be good against collector. Maybe lose the strength potion, the flex potion instead. Yeah, dodging elites has paid off quite well. I feel like the boss of the act is going to get destroyed here. Let's snag another upgrade on something we care about. Dual wields, okay. Let's upgrade one of these armas. Or maybe I should just get body slam upgraded now. That's the last card that really matters. Now nah, we should just upgrade the body slam. Then I don't need to worry about actually lining up the armaments with the stuff that needs upgrades. We can just do it. Wield that flash of steel. Triple wield that flash of steel. Okay. Hmm. Just win next turn, right? Pretty sure we do. Pretty sure we do. A second wind. And it's over, just like that. All of our potions intact into Act 4. Here we're offered Feed, Offering, Limit Break, Exhume. What an interesting set of options. Given how the deck is currently operating, I actually think this might be the time we skip the Feed take an offering here so that we can accelerate our draw engine. We also get three block back, courtesy of self-forming clay. Although we can dual wield the feed, so we can, we can gain a lot of max health from feed here. Currently, we're looking for more total block. We don't have enough block for heart yet. 
Although self-forming clay could help a ton in that regard. Let's go full gas. I'll take the uppering here. Is Exume ever a consideration? It can be. Getting back any one card can be very strong. Like the Flame Barrier or Second Wind or a Shockwave. But I think getting started faster is going to be the way to go here. Snicka Oil is interesting. I don't trust it. Yeah, Body Slam's upgraded. I don't trust it. Pandora's Box. There's nothing left to box. Sacred Bark. Double the effectiveness of potions. Huh. I have a lot of potions. And there's only one fight I'm really worried about here. Which means doubling all of our one-time use power seems really good. Because then we can set up so much better for heart. That means we only need one Feel No Pain to beat heart. We only need one Impervious or Entrench to beat heart. We have Question Card to find him, too. I say we take the Sacred Bark here. Because otherwise my options are transform three defends or remove two cards, but I really don't have cards I want to remove. I guess I could remove blood for blood and combust. That's not too bad. But I can probably remove those two cards without needing to use a boss relic for it. Take the Sacred Bark. Okay, we have to go for the Burning Elite. Looks like we get tons of upgrades doing that. And a late shop is good. And an early shop if we want one. But I think we might want to just take lots of combats here. In order, to, in order to look at as many cards as possible with question card. To find a feel no pain or an impervious or just a whole bunch of one-time use skills that will get the job done. I guess a rage would also work, huh? Yes, we can use Rage. Huh, all right, I'll keep that in mind. I guess no dual wield? No dual wield. Other cards seem important. Rage is a skill, that's right. Correct. But that's exactly right, because we can we can dual wield Flash of Steel and play that an unlimited number of times. If we set up correctly, that one rage is an unlimited number of block in any fight except Time Eater. And I'm not worried about Time Eater. I'm worried about the heart. Why does the Ironclad ride a bicycle? Because it's dual wield. Oof. Terrible. There we go. So, more upgraded block cards is a must. We have to raise the maximum amount of block that the deck can make, as high as possible. So every one-time use block skill is going to be required. Spooky. 
still don't think I want to use Combust here. Good. Die. There's the disarm, finally. Okay, that can shut off the extra strength from the Philosopher's Stone is, and is very important for us to grab. Give me that. Might even want to upgrade it for a uh, Time Eater slash Awakened One, potentially. Awakened One could be an issue. I don't think it will. Slamming and jamming. Okay, this, this is amazing. Speed potion that says gain 10 dexterity. At the end of your turn, lose that 10 dexterity. That can add 10 to all of these one-time use block cards to be allowing for a massively higher peak of performance during, for example, the heart fight. I'm also gonna take this true grits. Who's the fire pot? Take this fight. Oh, I don't love this fight. Mm. That's better. Ish. Better ish. This I'm not going to change. This is going to add a curse and has to be removed. Got him. An upgraded True Grit. Welcome. And then upgrade the other True Grit, right? So we have two upgraded True Grits now. Seems like a silly deck. It's a very silly deck. And I love it. It is my precious child. All right, we said we weren't afraid of the Nemesis, and I meant it. Don't believe we are afraid of you. Cool to be able to see what the enemy is doing. Alright, you're toast now. On this turn, we win. 
Pretty sure. Although we have to do a wheel body slam first. Easy. We get a bird faced urn when we play a power card heal for two. Another duplication. Potion. And I think I want to power through because that's another block card. It adds wounds, which are a status. We have a second win. We have an evolve. Sounds good. Who needs a Reaper? Not us. We have all the healing we want right here. Hmm. Gambler's Brew is very good as well. Might need Gambler's Brew to get set up on turn one in the heart fight. Maybe we just keep one duplication potion. How many cards do I possibly want to duplicate anyway? Still don't have a feel no pain. Just take the fresher dupe. We'll do it. I like having the flexibility with all the different potion types. You could make the argument that since the Gambler's Brew doesn't get uh, multiplied by the Sacred Bark, that we want to do differently, but I'm not convinced by that. Debating taking another combat here. Also take one here. That means we get one more upgrade. I'm cool with one more upgrade. Let's get more cards. Cards are good. We might be able to kill the transient. So that's kind of cool. Depends on how many Dark Embraces we get, how quickly. So far, not great. This could be your first time using the Offering properly. kill now. Permanent dexterity. Second disarm. Probably don't upgrade either disarm now. Just have two unupgraded ones. Next spots. I think the speed pot's better. And I don't want both. Disarm both their arms. Preserved insect will make Act 4 notably quite a bit easier. Do want that recite. Mini Reptomancer with her minions. Minions. Get it? The mini minion? Yeah. It's funny. Trust me. Just trust me. Four fairies in the Entropic Brew? I'd love to see it. All right, I finally found the situation where we're going to play Offering. <laughs> it's this. 
It's this situation. This situation is too much. Heal easily also. I don't need to kill these daggers. That's the real truth of it. Combat with one strength or gain 12 metallicize? Holy moly. That's a good potion. There's the rage I wanted too. Ooh. Or another shockwave. I think with the metallicize potion, I probably don't need a rage. Now we need more potion slots. Now I get rid of Gambler's Brew. Currently I am standing, Solarius. I have a standing desk I raise and lower as appropriate. It's one metal potion. It's a block potion every turn. Rage is pretty GG. Let's take the rage. Then maybe we have a chance maybe to show off what it can do for us. Only reason I hesitated on the rage is because I thought we might not need it anymore. Twelve metallicize. Absurd. Oh yeah, I do wield it. Where did the second one come from? Right, that was me. Grab a little more block. Just a bit more. And hey, we can lose that blood for blood. Easy peasy. Thanks, falling event. Blood for blood was great in the earlier part of the game. Now it's obsolete because the body slam is doing the thing. So we'll lose the blood for blood and we can remove the combust too. Oh, by the way, here's Feel No Pain and Medical Kit, because we need the run to be even more secure. We can buy another Entropic Brew, too, <laughs> which I won't be doing, but I will be buying Medical Kit, Feel No Pain, Combust Remove, for surezies. Feels like we're pretty secure at this point. Our late game is locked in. We have very good potions. We have a very good deck. We got rid of all the trash. I can't see this possibly going wrong, quite frankly. Really should not say things like that. Uh, now we can upgrade armaments, huh? Offering upgrade is reasonable, too. Or feel no pain upgrade. Let's do... Let's do the Dupont. Let's do feel no pain. Not that I plan on using it. Do shrug. Uh, pummel strike first. And shrug. Rage. 
Corruption. Infernal Blade. Wild Strike. Beauty Slam. Let's armor the Sentinel too and get a full block here. Good. I'm going to do a wheel Dark Embrace here. So we get started a bit earlier. Oh my. Yes. The power. I'll be back. All right, now we can play pretty much everything. Should be able to get back to barricade easily. For the Awakened One. Awakened One punishes us for playing powers, which makes this a little spooky, but not that spooky. I think I'm going to go Armaments, Armaments, Corruption, Flame Barrier here. Like so. Upgrade the other Arma. Upgrade everything. Now make Flame Barrier free and play it. Should be able to do this without the birds. Not sure about that though. I'm gonna hit one. Not sure how many turns we need to get set up here. Could be a few. Ooh, that's not good. I want that dual wield. Hmm. Yeah, not good. I really want anger here. The attack arrives. Here's Dark Abrace and Barricade. Power through his crazy good card draw now. Let's play the wounds. Seems like a good situation for offering here. Just play everything. My hand is full. You're next, kids. P Awakened One. Okay, that wasn't hard at all. And we still have all these good potions in Act 4. Two thump, two thump, two thump of deep pulsing dread can be felt throughout the room. Is this the heart of the spire, the source of all these powers? 
ready your blade, dealing 2291. Good year. I guess getting corruption on floor one is pretty good, huh? You can just build around it the whole time. Let's do an armaments upgrade. Offering was fine there, too. Demon form is here. Orange pellets might have been nice. That would have been good to do instead of, uh... The other thing. Oh, well. Love the current potions. I don't think we need to make any changes, although an energy potion is not terrible. Let's just move to the next fight. They're tiny. And I'm not getting obliterated yet on turn one. Well, I might. Let's just do Arma on Sentinel. Although I could play Carnage if I wanted to. I don't need to. Next turn is up in the air, though. Don't know how this is going to go. With no uh, card draw on turn one. We may need to panic with some of the potions. We only have three cards in hand, and there's going to be lots of damage incoming. Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much the worst case scenario. Uh oh, that is not what we wanted to see. So I'm wondering if we maybe want to use uh, a couple of potions here to save our health. He did that third darker brace. Yeah, here's where Gambler's Brew would be very good. But I could see us using the speed potion and the dupe potion here. Then we play double defend for 15 times two, double true grit for 19 times two. So we block 30 plus 38, 68. And we actually full block if we use both of these potions. We lose both burns, although we can get rid of them anyway. Not taking any damage sounds pretty good. And then we still have the double power metallicized potion and the entropic brew for the hard fight. The entropic brew seems pretty good. And then we can drink it all on turn one as well. If I keep these potions for the hearts, I'm going to have to wait on drinking, on drinking the entropic brew as well. Let's do this. And yeah, heart fight is potentially easier for this deck too. There's Dark Embrace. Okay, I'm not afraid anymore. There is no need to fear. Now the Dark Embrace is here. That was worth it. Get bronze scales to do damage back to the hearts. And a third disarm, which sounds good to me. With Philo Stone Heart, we definitely want to get uh, disarm early in this fight. So let's guarantee it. Onwards to the final battle. Really happy to see turn one upgraded evolve with the armaments here. Let's see what Entropic Brew says. Ooh, we get an Ancient Potion. We can block Vulnerable. Skill Potion could be useful. I think we use the Fire Potion right now.
And I would like to take Beat of Death a bunch of times this turn so that I can... get more block from self from Clay next turn. Since I have an Armaments Plus in hand, let's use the Attack Potion. We want to do 80 free damage. Yes! Although the two bludgeons later will actually be a problem, right? No, we should skip this. We don't want to add more cards to the deck, I just realized. Definitely drink this. And we want to take damage. Let's go Body Slam first. Arma. Colonel Blade. Close line's good. Take damage, heal the damage. Take damage, heal the damage. Take damage, so we get 24 free block next turn. We're not vulnerable. Actually, uh, 28 free block. And the heart is weakened. That's pretty good. Very happy to see offering here. Still no dark embraces though. Hmm. That's not good. To keep rage for later. We can use our skill potion now if we want to. It's okay at the moment. It's better after playing Feel No Pain, though. I'm gonna wait. This is not doing that much damage to us. See, currently we're blocking for an additional. Yeah, we've got 22 block currently. It's okay. This adds a seven. Take five. Five is fine. Flame barrier does do more return damage on the multi-hit, but we're not gonna need it. Oh, void, you stinky. Uh, Sentinel will save me though. I hope. I don't need it to. Could also just not play any more cards here. And then redraw to barricade later. Seems like a good turn to draw a lot of cards. There we go. yet. I want to get rid of Clue's line. This is fine. There's Barricade.
Here we go. I guess we can just uh, do this now, huh? Spun one, thanks for the prime sub. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club. So now we just do this. This is unlimited block. Not that I need to do this completely, but it's allowed. garbage. But our rage is gone after this, so we have to do as much block as we want right now. For convenience, we probably want 400. Entrench in the skill potion, that'd make a life a lot easier. Unfortunately, it's just limit break or offering. Armaments, upgrade yourself. Yeah, 400 is enough. Does this hurt my wrist? No, it doesn't. I'm just uh, pressing three and then clicking the mouse, so I'm not actually moving either hand, really. There we go. I can do this all day. Now we draw exactly these cards each and every turn. We can keep looping Flash of Steel, but now we're not getting block per one we play. We just want to go Body Slam and turn. Body Slam and turn, Body Slam. GG. Yeah. That's all it takes. If you enjoyed that video, watch this one next. And don't forget to check out Baylor Lord Plays for variety content. Click the blue Baylor icon to subscribe.